I personally reached out to Good Notes to see if they wanted to sponsor this video, and so they did. Dear Younger Me, I know you're probably about to start engineering school and you feel a bit lost and confused. This organization is definitely something you might experience and you will be taking paper notes while you'll be keeping them in this red binder you got at Staples. You will lose assignments, forget to hand them in, and go a bit crazy during your first semesters. You might even try to type your notes on a laptop and you'll hate it. My advice to you is keep handwriting your notes. You'll realize that you will retain a lot of the knowledge you're taught in class and you won't have to study as much for your tests. But as you might discover halfway through your education is that you should have gotten an iPad from the get-go. Now, as it is, the iPad is not so great for students. This is why I strongly recommend getting the Apple Pencil. For college, my recommendation is to always avoid high storage units and stick to the base model of the iPad, whether that's the new iPad 9th gen or the iPad Air in this beautiful sky blue color. They will both do everything you need. I just find the iPad Pro way overkill for this type of stuff. And if you want your iPad to truly feel like paper, if your budget allows it, get some paper like sheets. I did pay about $25 for mine so they are quite expensive, but these do feel great and it honestly feels and sounds like I am writing on paper. But they reduce the glare on this 10.9 inch screen, avoid fingerprints and don't worry it won't damage your Apple Pencil tip. The Apple keyboard case is another thing you might want to consider, but to be honest, it's definitely not something you really need. I personally find it allows you to browse the net a lot quicker when multitasking with notes. I think it just depends on how efficient you want your workflow to be. Don't get me wrong, it's such a great keyboard and I enjoy how it types. Don't forget you can get a separate cheaper Bluetooth keyboard instead. It might not feel as awesome as these keycaps that have the perfect travel in my opinion and you might be missing out on this trackpad but it will do. Again, a keyboard really isn't a must. Personally, when I first set up my iPads, I like making sure I have Touch ID and with this one here, you'll find it on the power button. Then, I usually like to get rid of all the applications I won't be using at all. This could be things such as podcasts, memos, Apple TV, contacts, all of the iWork apps, and so on. At this point, I usually head to the app store and download some of the apps I usually use for school. Just remember that as a student, you should have access to the 365 suite, so I recommend installing those in case you need to write some essays. But I find it super important having something like Google Calendar to organize your days, Google Drive to back things up and organize your school files, Gmail to make sure you quickly have access to emails with your Google account, and GoodNotes, which has become my main note-taking app since I started studying for networking. Although I do like having Spotify and Netflix on the fly to listen to music or multitask while I'm watching a TV show. By the way, let me know in the comments section what show you recommend. 
With all of this, I don't think you can have more of a complete iPad setup and with it, you should be ready to take notes for class. Taking good notes is almost like an art. In fact, by using a digital device, it's important to choose the right notes app for yourself. Recently, I've been sticking with good notes because of the amount of awesome features it delivers. But overall, an application like such is able to compartmentalize all of your school mess into a single well-structured platform. It can do fun things like choosing a book cover along the right type of paper and template size you need. I'm not a fan of sliding through pages, so I recommend you stick to a vertical scrolling direction in class. I remember when I was studying calculus, I used to keep this book with a bunch of posted flags in order to remember the important sections. The fun thing is that with the iPad, you can import a PDF of your book and use the grid to check out all of your book's pages, but most importantly, get rid of your posted flags and outline your desired slide. You also have automatic generated book outlines, which makes it super easy to follow along. And yes, PDFs are actually searchable, so don't worry, you can easily search for specific theorems like the sandwich theorem. Good old calculus. Okay, so most note-taking apps will have this thing called the toolbar. And for me personally, this is why GoodNotes sort of took over as my app of choice. Other than being able to have multiple books open within toolbar tabs, you have a multitude of tools that will allow you to write cohesive notes. Back in my first semester of software engineering, I used to print the next lecture's PDF in a grid of four and use this to annotate while my teacher talked. Once I got home, I would simply grab some sheets of paper and make my own well organized set of notes for that class. It was the only way for me to retain information and study for tests, but as you can imagine, I had a bunch of papers laying around and a set of notes in this red binder. Not practical at all. Which is why I got an iPad, started importing these slides and created my own set of digital notes. Although it was a mess at first, but here's what I've learned in order to take effective notes. First, use black paper and don't be afraid to use colors within your pens and add some thickness to them for things such as titles. These type of titles usually represent my chapters, which I always mix with a thinner ball pen and a lighter color to write sub chapters. Within these sections, I got used to developing my written notes from the PDF slides into something more complete. Yes, sometimes this becomes studying because you need to research and understand the subject, but that is the whole goal of what we're doing here. Usually, teachers talk so fast that you end up writing keywords on these slides, and by the time you get home, there is not much you remembered. However, writing fast and moving forward is a thing digitally. Here, let me show you. Say you're writing a whole sentence within a slide. If the teacher happens to have made a mistake, he will most likely erase faster than you since you're already backtracked. But digitally, you can just tap your pen and erase quickly. You can also erase entire strokes to speed things up as well. Highlighting doesn't require you to dig within your pencil case, and if he ever moves things around on the board, you can use the lasso tool to restructure your notes and even change the color of your text without having to erase it. Just use these tools and techniques to your advantage because it has never been easier to take pictures of the board to stick them to your notes. Second, with a predefined structure and tool set, you can start getting fancier to your advantage. My summaries within every subheading varied. If I was dealing with definitions, I would use red to write the word and regular ink to define it. If I needed to dive deeper and deeper into it, I used to do it with arrows, but I think it's best to keep things neat by using arrowheads. I've also seen people decorating their titles, separating their subheadings with cool little stickers, and going as far as drawing cool diagrams for things such as a human cell. At the end of the day, you can honestly have something like this every time you go back to school. It'll make studying fun and an activity to look forward to. The cool thing is that GoodNotes now wants to become every student's go-to library of publicly available materials. In other words, a note-sharing platform with profiles to follow, people to interact with, and notes to like. I really would have wished this was available when I was a student because you can do things such as find relevant study material, save notes, filter by categories and subjects, and even share your own notes for other students to learn from. But what do you get for contributing to the platform? Well, with every note you upload, you acquire one ticket, which gives you the ability to upload unuploaded notes and have the chance to win the giveaway every first day of the month. 
To give you an example, the prices for August were an iPad Air with an Apple Pencil, an iPhone 12, or even a pair of Apple AirPods Pro or Samsung Galaxy Buds. So as long as you are writing meaningful notes and uploading good material, you can get rewarded. And since you're already doing so, we we'll might as well share them. If you want access to the community, I'll leave a link down below where you can enter their waiting list for their early on stages. Just a quick pointer, if you ever find yourself importing an assignment from your Google Drive and completing it by hand, you might have one of those teachers that like type notes instead. The Lasso tool is smart enough to convert most handwritten notes into text. I also remembered a lot of teachers giving us these Concordia plagiarism forms that needed to be signed and it was super easy for me to scan it, sign it with a pen, and send it to them by email with my attached assignment as well. Surprisingly, GoodNotes is also a PDF editor as well. So you can do things such as highlight, strike out, find a definition online, and copy. Now, remember I had told you guys to stick with the base model. If you ever go for the iPad Air, remember that you can directly connect a USB-C SSD and expand your storage here. So there's no need to buy something like the 256 gigabyte option because the base model can do it all. Although as much as I love these bezels on the 60 hertz bright screen, these amazing speakers, and the boxy aluminum shade body, I think your best bet is to go with the 9th gen iPad or the new iPad mini. But for $599, this here is an iPad Pro killer. iPad Air does have a 12 megapixel sensor like the iPad Pro, but just one camera. With 4GB of RAM and very similar benchmark numbers on paper as the Pro, this is just the ultimate student tablet out there. So no need to worry about multitasking capabilities since this will do it all. Overall, no matter which note-taking app you're you're using, some just happen to be super reliable, enjoyable, and easy to interact with. I just hope this video allows you guys to start your semester strong and make studying and note taking a lot less boring. I am currently building a new setup at a new location so I have to get going. I will see you all soon. Take care.